when my final breath has left these lungs, I will ever be with you. Where the song goes on and on. Well, good morning. Welcome to your Fuller Baptist Church. It's good to see you here at our 9 o'clock service this morning. And so I'm uh, glad that you've made it out today and start your week. I hope you've had a good week. And uh, if you're a guest with us this morning, if you would take one of these welcome cards, fill that out, give it to one of our team members. We have a gift for you before you leave today. And again, good to see you. If we'll bow our heads this morning, something I thought about yesterday is uh, something, uh, the word specific kept coming up yesterday. You pray this morning as I pray that God would touch your heart about something specific this morning something you need to change, something we need to get better. It just came to my mind yesterday. And so let's pray that way this morning. Let's be specific as we do that. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word, God. And it is, it, it, the word of the Lord, Lord, it throws darts at our heart. And Lord, gives us those things that we need to change. And I pray, Lord, that you would specifically touch something this morning in somebody's life. Lord, we know as humans, we can't help anybody do anything, Lord. It's through your Holy Spirit and your word that gets things done. And we just pray this morning, Lord, that... You would do that work in somebody's heart, Lord, that you would draw them close, Lord, you'd save them, you'd get them back in fellowship with you, Lord. We do love you. Again, thank you for your word. Your name we do pray. Amen. Well, it's good to see you this morning. Let's all stand begin worshiping together. Great song you've already won. There's peace. Let's sing. There's peace that outlasts darkness. Oh, that's in the blood. There's future grace that's mine today. That Jesus Christ has won. So I can face tomorrow. For tomorrow's in your hands. And all I need you will provide. Just like you are. Yeah. 
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. singing so far this morning. Let's shake hands as the choir comes down. One more song this morning as we continue singing Holy Spirit. You're welcome here. Let's sing it out today. Let's sing. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living Tasted and 
Empty and broken, I came back to him, a vessel unworthy, so far with sin, but he did not despair, he started over. Today, all because. 
Jesus, Jesus didn't throw the clay away. Now he is the potter and I am the clay molded in his image. He wants me Oh, but when I stumble and I fall and my vessel breaks, he just picks up the pieces. He doesn't throw the clay away. To his likeness, he fashions the clay, a vessel of honor. I am today, all because Jesus didn't throw. It's all because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. Good. You ready? Okay. Thank you, Matt. I'm glad he didn't throw the clay away, aren't you? Good morning. Good to see you this morning in the Lord's house. We're in the Gospel of John, chapter number one. Have you ever, <clears throat> have you ever met somebody, been around them, and uh, after a period, you know, you thought you knew them, but after a period of time, things took place, and you said, man, I didn't know that person. I thought I knew them. We've all had those experiences, haven't we? Sure. Do you know Jesus? Oh, man, all over our country. I mean, people, yeah, man, I know Jesus. You speak, hey, do you know Jesus? Well, do you know him? Because a lot of people who say they know him, they don't know him. But here's, here's my example. Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, just out from our house, there's a very nice tabernacle. I mean, it looks like a church, real churchy looking no crosses on it now. Be very observant. No crosses on it. There's a spire that sticks straight up. Beautiful brick belt. No crosses. But I guarantee if you walked in, you could start using that terminology. Isn't Jesus good? Yeah, man. Boy, don't you love Jesus? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, if you want to go talk about their doctrine, how about this? Jesus Christ, they believe, was Michael, the archangel, before becoming a man. Out of one of their books, it says, Reasoning from the Scriptures, page 218, the Son of God was known as Michael before he came to earth. They don't know Jesus. But they say they know Jesus. Okay, here's another one. Um, how about, I'm sorry, I was thinking about the Mormon church, the Jehovah's, that's what they believe, the Jehovah's Witness church is up a different direction from my house. The Mormon church is the one that's got the real pretty tabernacle out from my house. And I guarantee if you walked in, they'd say, man, we love Jesus. We know Jesus. Boy, Jesus is real. I mean, yeah, man, ain't Jesus good, okay? But many of them, they don't know Jesus because, you see, they believe that Jesus. Now, you're not going to get this if you walk in the church the first time. You're going to have to get their books and dig some. You're going to have to be around a while. You're not going to get this when either one of these groups come up to your door. And try to talk to you. But they believe that Jesus Christ <clears throat> was first procreated as a spirit child by a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. Mm. 
Matter of fact, a guy named Milton Hunter, he was a member. He's high up the ladder. Milton Hunter was a member of the Mormon First Council of the Seventy. That kind of tells you this is not just an ordinary fellow, okay? And this is what he said. The appointment of Jesus to be the Savior of the world was contested by one of the other sons of God. He was called Lucifer. Now, you're not going to get that if you just walk through the front door. You've got to check in their books. That was from the Gospel Through the Ages, page 15. All right? Do they know Jesus? No, they don't know Jesus. But they talk a lot about Jesus. What about the Unitarians? They've got a place also in our town, back in Lenore. It's not very big. It's like an old house that's been converted. The Unitarians, you see. Now, the Unitarians believe that Jesus was a great man. They'll even say maybe he was a prophet of God. Some might even say he was supernatural. But they'll be quick to say he was not God. What about the Muslims? The Muslims are one of the largest religions other than Christianity in the world today. We're seeing more and more and more Muslims, okay? And we're even seeing how Muslims greatly impact our, our government in America, okay? They believe in Jesus. They sure do. And they hold Jesus in high regard. They think he was a prophet. But they do not believe he was crucified. And they do not believe he was resurrected. And they do not believe that he is God. Well, let's tighten it down a little bit more, okay? Because, you know, uh, a lot of people today can get confused with a simple article. Even a letter. So if I ask you today, which one is correct? Is Jesus a son of God or is Jesus the son of God? I mean, it's just one letter. They're both articles, a, the. Which one? There is a seismic difference in theology between how you answer that question. Because many will believe well, you could get right along with the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons if you used the little A, a son of God. You're in. They're good with you, okay? But if you only believe that Jesus is a son of God, you're not going to heaven. Not if I'm reading John 8, 24 right. John 8, 24 said, if you believe not that I, in our King James Bibles, it says, if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. But if you look very closely, translators provided the he because it's in italics, which means it's not found in the original scriptures. So we could read it like this way. If you believe not that I am. So well, what's the big difference? We get I am he, I am. Oh, there's a big difference, you see. Because when the Pharisees were arguing with Jesus, about Abraham. You remember what they said? And they said, you, you say you know Abraham? You're not even 50 years old. How can you know Abraham? And Jesus said, he said that he was before Abraham. And he used the phrase, I am, in reference to himself. And the Jews knew exactly what he was saying. And they got ready to stone him to death. Remember whenever Moses at the burning bush spoke to God and said, God, you want me to go back? What, what am I to say your name is? And he said, you tell them when they ask you that my name is I am, that I am. So that's a direct reference to the Almighty right there. And Jesus said, if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. What was he saying? If you believe that I am anything lesser than God, you will die in your sins. I remember years ago, a friend of mine back in Caldwell County, Daniel Buchanan. And so Daniel was an evangelist, and he was a young man, and so he was going to go, I guess, on an evangelistic tour. So you talk about being creative. So he gets this old school bus and has it painted. He has an artist. Matter of fact, he was an unconverted artist, and he was actually painting the gospel on the side of this bus. And they took the thing to California. And he said the thing that, that got the most, I guess, confrontation was one sentence. On the front of that bus, he had it painted, Jesus Christ is God. You see, a lot of people, 
Man, they'll rub shoulders with you all day long in a variety of religions until you say Jesus Christ is God. Let's look at John chapter 1 and let's see what the Bible says. Because John, man, I'm going to tell you, you know, a lot of times before you start reading, a lot of people talking to a young convert, Matt, they'll say, where should I start reading? Oh, well, you ought to start reading in John because this is about the easiest of the Gospels. <laughs> well, when you want to talk about word structure, those of you who are teachers, okay, if you're talking about just simple words, you know, not a, not a, very, not a lot of syllables and easy to read, yeah, John's good. But if you want to talk about theology, man, he'll knock your cap off. It's almost unbelievable. You know, you've got the four Gospels. They all mesh together. The first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are what we call the synoptic Gospels because the message is so very similar. And they're going to give you the message. You know, John says, in the beginning, well, when Matthew talks like that, he's talking about Bethlehem. That is not what John is talking about. John. The gospel of John is out of this world. Literally, in verse 1, he is out of this world. There is probably no deeper theological treatise in the New Testament than the gospel of John. So we want today to begin to get to know Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So he says, in the beginning was the Word, and it's all capitalized. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, my friend, we could sit down right there and go to seminary. I'm telling you what. If, when you begin to unpack <laughs> verse three lines in verse number one of John's gospel, it is absolutely revolutionary. And, you know, someone said one time, everyone's a theologian. You are. We, everybody's at different levels, but everybody's a theologian, and everybody's a philosopher, too, you see, because you've got views of this life and views of this world. Did I say life? Man, that's one of the words that John's going to grab just a little bit later on. He's going to grab words like life and light and contrast them with darkness and so he's going to begin to take some words and make some major metaphors out of them that are just so enlightening. But we've got to take first things first. Let's read it again. In the beginning. Now, John, a little bit later on in 1 John, we might add, in 1 John, the epistle, chapter 1 and verse number 1, he says, and the word was, was uh, uh, he talks about there, uh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong verse there. In 1 John 1, 1, he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Now, in 1 John 1, 1, he is talking about the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. In the gospel of John 1 and 1, he says in the beginning, as far back as you want to go. He's not talking about Bethlehem. You go all the way back to Genesis 1. Oh, excuse me. You go back beyond Genesis 1. How far do you want to go back? You see, I'm not going to argue with you this morning, uh, Bishop Usher's dates about how old the earth is. Is the earth 6,000 years old? Is the earth 10,000 years old? Is the earth a billion years old? I'm not going to argue that with you. You go back as far as you want to go. And when you get back there, you're going to meet Jesus. Hmm? Oh, he predates the earth. He predates the universe. In the beginning. Now, notice it didn't say at the beginning. No. It didn't say from the beginning. So, you're going to see that John, John is very precise in his language. In the beginning, as far back as you want to go. Go back there. Because you're going to meet Jesus. He says, in the beginning, already there was the word. Now, why does he use this word, word, the Greek logos? Why does he use that kind of terminology? There's a reason for that. There's a, there, he's got something in mind right there. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Man, 
it's amazing how he takes this word, word. Because word is a medium of manifestation. Did you know that Jesus wants you to know something about him? He wants you to know him. He wants you to know all about him. Absolutely. We're going to say some more about that in a moment. But John's gospel, as we read through it, is going to record and talk about, well, Genesis talks about the creation of man. John's going to talk about the recreation of man. Uh, Genesis goes back and talks about light coming in on darkness. John's going to talk about light. But John's going to talk about light in a different direction. John's going to talk about darkness in a different dimension. John's going to talk about not just a, a physical darkness, which is the absence of physical light, but John's going to talk about a moral darkness. Mm. For example, whenever Jesus said to um, um, uh, uh, there at, uh, at the Lord's Supper, he says to Judas, and I think he's actually saying it beyond Judas to Lucifer, he said, this is your hour and the power of darkness. He's not talking about this afternoon when the sun goes down. He's talking about darkness in a metaphorical sense. So John is going to talk about light. Jesus is the light. And whereas Genesis speaks of physical light and physical darkness, Jesus is going to deal more with spiritual and moral light, which is truth. Matter of fact, he brings up truth. In John 14, he says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Boy, John's gospel is a book of life. It's a book of new life. It's a book of revelation. So we said there with the word, word, that Jesus wants to communicate with you. Jesus wants to have a relationship with you that is real and that is deep, all right? He doesn't want this surface business. Matter of fact, I think about the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul, when he penned down the book of Philippians, which means at that time he had been an apostle for a long time. He had known Jesus for a long time. He was, I mean, he had already, if my memory is correct, had already penned out the book of Romans, which is probably one of the heaviest doctrinal books in the New Testament. And even at that right there in Philippians 3.10, Paul said that I may know him. Paul said, I want to know Jesus. Hmm? You know, we understand in, in Christian growth there's something called progressive revelation. We grow and we know more and more and more. He said, man, that's what I want to do. I want to get me a book so I can just completely fathom Jesus. <laughs> that's not going to happen. You see, here's what's happening. And this is why the Gospel of John is so amazing. Because so many people have such a low view of Jesus and such a low view view of God. And it all comes from the fact they don't know him. Have you ever been in conversation with people or even watched television and noticed how many times they use the name of God in vain? People that do that have a very deficient and low view of God. Hmm? They do. Well, he's getting ready to give us a proper and a high view of God. All right, let's go back again. He says, in the beginning was the Word. Jesus was already there. You say, well, how can you know that that was Jesus? Well, John says it was. Matter of fact, John, who also penned the book of Revelation, said in chapter 19 and verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name, Jesus' name, is called the Word of God. Amen. So we don't have to wonder about who this is talking about right here. We've already gave you John 8, 24. We have to know him in the right way. Hebrews 1, 2 says, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. You see, nature can reveal to you the existence of God and the power of God. And what I mean by that is we know this this earth this world didn't just happen 
Okay, it didn't just happen. Not at all. So nature can reveal that, but nature, natural revelation cannot reveal God's moral attributes of holiness and justice and grace and love. That's where we have to come to the Bible and we get what's called special revelation. That's revelation from the Word of God. So in John chapter number 1, in verse number 1, we see this beginning of John's Trinitarian thought that's going to be expanded on throughout his entire gospel. He's going to grow this thing. He's going to give us more. He's going to reveal more and more to us. Now, 17 verses later in John, in verse number 18, it's going to say, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, and the word begotten is a very important word, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. All right. Now, that phrase, in the bosom of the Father, may seem a little bit archaic to us. It, it conveys the idea that one that at the Father's side or that one who is in the closest relationship with the Father, he hath declared him or he hath unfolded the teaching. You see, John is going to say three chapters later in chapter 4 that God is spirit. Okay, God is spirit. John, I think it's 4 and verse 24, if I remember correctly. All right. So let's talk about the Trinity because it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And a lot of people have a problem, a real problem with the Trinity. You say, well, Brother Setzer, do you understand it? I believe it, but I can't fathom all of it. I mean, how can a created being say that he can fathom the Creator? You see what I'm saying? But the Bible has revealed much to us, and I do believe it. So basically, in a nutshell, let me give you a definition of the Trinity. We're talking about the fact that of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they're all three God. Here we go. Three distinct personalities, that's an important word, within one divine essence, okay? Now, some people make an error. It's the error of what's known as tritheism, and they try to say we worship three gods. That's what the Muslims accuse us of. Well, you're worshiping three gods. No, 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 we're not. No, no, we're not. We worship the one Lord God, okay? But God manifest himself in three distinct personalities known as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, when we say that, here's another word. We are not, because this was one of the errors that came out, we're not talking about, here's the word, a modalism, M-O-D-A-L-I. We're not talking about modalism, which says, well, here's God the Father, and he's got the God the Father coat on. And then a little bit later, God the Father came down to the earth, and he put the Jesus coat on. And then a little bit later on, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Because we have Jesus on earth talking to God in heaven, and Jesus on earth is, is in energized and enabled and helped by God the Holy Spirit. We're not talking about three separate gods. We don't worship three separate gods. We worship God, one essence manifested in three personalities. Now, so let's just talk a minute about what do you mean by personality? You're a person, and I'm a person, okay? I was working on a message uh, coming up that's, uh, that's in Exodus chapter 19, and um, I was thinking some about this thing. You know, yeah, we're actually, com you're very complex. We are. You know, sometimes we'll say that we have, we all have a human nature, right? And then there's times we'll say we have a sin, we have a sin nature. We do have a sin nature, but I'm getting to the place I want to stop using the word nature because it's confused with my human nature. Sin is just inside of the human body. Sometimes sin is referred to as the flesh, okay? Sometimes it's referred to in the Bible as the old man. Sometimes it's referred to as sin as a nature, okay? So I don't want to confuse it with my human nature. So you are a being. You are a person. 
What does that mean? You see, there's a lot of confusion with that right there because some people equate an animal to the same status as a human. Is that accurate? Now, we can love fuzzy and furry and all. We love them, don't we? Yeah, but they're not on the same status as a human, okay? No, 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 they're not, okay? So you have personality, and God has personality. Let's define personality or person. So person in the Greek translates the word prosopon, all right? In the Latin, persona. Latin was the language of the Romans, Greek was the language in the days of Jesus. The Koine Greek was the language of the everyday person, okay? Jesus is going to go into a certain atmosphere. If he's going to Capernaum, he's probably speaking to people in Greek right there. Our entire New Testament is written in Greek, all right? And so we have these two words. And so, and so this is interesting. The Greek word for person designates, I shouldn't hit that side, hit this side, the face. The side or the face. You say, that don't make no sense. Why Why the face? Why would Persopon talk about the face and it's defined as person? Because it's through your face, through your smile, through your eyes, that the inner self is revealed. Hmm? So take the word, that take the Latin word, persona, okay? Persona in Latin meant a mask. Do you remember the old Greek theater? When one person was playing more than one role, what would he do? He would take a mask on a stick. Remember those old, man, they look like Darth Vader or something like that. Those masks, you know, on a stick, and he would hold that mask up. Well, in Latin, that was persona. And he would portray or play. And when he held that mask up, that would describe characteristics of the person. He comes over to this side of the stage. He pulls another mask up because now, what? The Latin persona, he is depicting a different character, okay? So these two words give us the idea of person or personality. So in reference to the Trinity as three persons, the word refers to the attributes of personhood. What's that? Self-awareness, you've got that. Choice, you've got that. Ability to reason or be creative, you've got that. To love, you've got that. You possess a will. In other words, you can make independent decisions of others. You've got that right there. And self-consciousness and awareness of other people. You've got that. God has that. You've got, do you see what I'm saying now? Three distinct personalities within one divine essence. Now, once again, I'm not telling you that I fathom all that in the Trinity, but what that does is make me want to raise my hands and bow my head and say, God, you are awesome. You see, now John is the last of the Gospels being penned. Matthew, Mark, and Luke had already been written down. John comes along, and it's like the Holy Spirit is saying, okay, John, now we're going to get into the heavier stuff. We're going to get, they know that Jesus, they know that Jesus had a birth back in Bethlehem. They know that Jesus had a childhood. They know that Jesus became a carpenter. We're going to take him further and let him know who Jesus is. All right? You say, man, this is pretty deep. I don't, I'm not too crazy about this. Just give me something. Give me chapter 3 where, you know, give me the woman at the well. We'll come to that in good time. I want you to know who Jesus is. Because it's going to get just as thick and just as deep when you begin to talk about the deity of Christ. Christ the God man. All right? Now, boy, there's been heresies in the church. And you see, <coughs> there were men in the church, when you got talking about this right here, they were labeled as heretics. Matter of fact, once again, you, you, 
they got in trouble just about over one letter, one letter in a word, in how a word defined who Jesus Christ was. And so it's not like that you say, well, I'm struggling a little bit with this. Well, you were not the first one, but this was very, very important. So you see, let's wrap up on personhood just a minute. So when we talk about personality or person, we're not talking about the body. You see, the real you inhabits the body, all right? So whenever you die, well, you die, but you don't really die. You die, and they bury you, but that's not the end of you is what I mean, you see. You just simply, well, Paul used the word tabernacle. But if we look at what he really means, he's talking about a tent. Your body's a tent. The real you, the real person exists inside of the body. Now, you ever get a hold of that? That'll give you some wonderful hope. All right? And we just, my sweet, precious, dear father-in-law just died a few months ago. And I was blessed to get to be in the hospital room. When he breathed his last. You said, what do you mean? You must be nuts. What do you mean you were blessed to watch a person die? He wasn't the first one I've watched to die. And I'm saying, when you've got a man who loves Jesus, a woman who loves Jesus, and they pass, I like to use the word, they graduate. They graduate. They didn't die. If you mean by die, cease to exist. They just changed residences. That's why you need to understand what person is. The real you. The real you. See, this outside keeps changing. I can't, I can't, I buy, you get this lotion and rub it on and take care of some of those <laughs> wrinkles, you know what I mean? And some people go a little farther and they, you know, they have a little job and tighten it up and they pull the wrinkles out and stretch some things like this. My friends, you're getting older. And you can deal with the wrinkles, but you're still getting older, all right? But if you'll understand there's something inside of you that's not getting older, it's the real you. And that's another thing that John is going to deal with. When Jesus talks about being alive, well, we've got to talk about that. And he talks about eternal life. He talks about everlasting life. Man, John will just blow your world up. John gave you so much hope. John gave you so much help. And you begin to realize who it is that we worship and who it is that we follow and who it is that we serve. You see, if you get a hold of John chapter 1, who Jesus really is, then when you come to John chapter 14 and Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, you'll say, I want to follow him. I want to live for him. I want to know him. I want to serve him. Are you beginning to see a little bit here of what we are talking about when we talk about who Jesus is and personality? Well, we've got about two minutes, all right? So let's finish up the whole chapter in two minutes. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I hope I have not absolutely thoroughly confused you this morning. I hope I have given you some better lie and understanding on who Jesus is. Because when you begin to understand that, you're going to say, oh, wow. Oh, what a Savior. Man, I am so excited. Your hands will go up and your knees will go down. And you'll want to praise him and magnify him. You see, it says, it says that in the beginning was the word Jesus, and the word was with God. You see, one of the shortest verses in the Bible is this right here. God is love. And let me tell you something. God defines love. John's going to pull another word out a little bit later on, and it's the word world. And he is not talking about planet Earth. He is talking philosophically about this world. Hmm? Absolutely. It's a very important word that we understand, that we get a grasp on. All right? And so God is love. And so there was love expressed among the members of the Trinity before the world was ever made. Huh? 
You ever heard some of these? I love gospel music, but sometimes they get a little bit too far out there, you see. And so some of these songs that, that wants to say, oh, God made man because he was lonely and he needed you. That's horrible. God's never been lonely, and God does not need you or me to make him complete. But he does love you. You see, <clears throat> when it said God is love, that predates all of us. There was love expressed among the members of the Trinity. So when we talk about the, the tri-personality of God, there are aspects of, of God and in, in, in their attributes of God that he wants to share with us. And part of that is love. And part of that is knowing us. Wow, our time is gone right now. Let's bow our heads today for a prayer. Can we? Can we? <clears throat> Dear Lord, you are so awesome. And you are so glorious. And you are so great. And Lord, even at, at times we struggle in trying to grasp the greatness and the awesomeness and the glory of you, dear God. But we just praise you this morning. And we thank you. And, Lord, in our hearts we bow before you. Lord, there may be somebody here this morning who's in their heart they've never bowed. They've never really realized who they were and realized who Jesus is. And I, I pray, Lord, that they will come to know you. There may be somebody today, Father, struggling in their heart, Lord. They're so full of anxiety and they're worried. And they just need to understand that you're God. And that Jesus, that you've got them, and you've got a plan for them, and it's going to be okay. Oh, God, today, help us. Help us to know you and draw closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's stand as Matt leads us in a song. If we can be a help to you this morning in a way, come, let us pray with you. Who has the power? To raise the dead, who can save us from our sin? He is our hope, our righteousness. Jesus, only Jesus. Who can make the blind to see? Who holds the keys that set us free? He paid it all to bring us peace. In Jesus, only Jesus. Holy King, Almighty Lord, saints and angels all. Join with them and bow before Jesus, only Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, and knowing this, that we serve a good God. We serve an almighty and powerful God. And, Lord, it would take eternity after eternity just to try to understand, Lord, who you are. We saw just in one verse this morning, Lord, your vastness, your greatness. Yeah, we just feel like we just scratched the surface a little bit. God, I pray this morning that in how big you are, Lord, you have a way of just coming down and speaking to our hearts in a way, Lord, that where you love us, you take care of us. Lord, you want us to live for you and serve you. And I pray this morning, Lord, that you would help us to see that through your word this morning, God, that who you are. Lord, that we can serve you and love you. Again, Lord, thank you for who you are and just being good to us this week. In your name we do pray. Amen. If you'll have a seat just for a few minutes. I've got a few announcements this morning. I've got several things coming up this week. Right after the 1030 service this morning, there will be a missions team meeting. So to your left, my right, uh, we'll be... Uh, having a meeting with that. We've got some good news and some updates there. So if you're part of that missions team going there, uh, we want to meet with you after the 1030 service. Also, next Saturday is the golf tournament at Lakewood Golf Course, and that is also to benefit the missions trip. So 
if you, you can still play, you can still get involved. We're looking hopefully to have about 10, 11 teams. So if you still wanted that, you said, I'm just, I don't have a team. I just got one. We have a few people that have done that. We can kind of place you on a team. So make sure you're doing that. You can register on the church website. You can come the day of. You can, you can come while we're playing. It doesn't matter. Just come out. We want you to be there. All right. So uh, we'll have lunch and everything that day. So please see me and Matt register there and we'll, we'll get you going there. Lord's Supper is next Sunday night, April the 14th. Looking forward to that with a special service. So you be here for that and make plans. Also, after that, uh, Lord's Supper, we'll have a family meeting that night. So make, uh, make plans to be here for both of those. Friday, April the 26th at 6.30, ladies uh, will have a banquet, a uh, season to bloom. They're looking forward to that. And uh, shopping vendors will be here at 5.30. So that's an hour before the event actually starts. April, Operation Christmas Child is wow items. That is those, that ball, that toy, something that catches those kids' eye. You say, I want to give to that. If you do that, put it in, in an envelope and then donate or put on there. It's a donation for OCC if you would like to give money rather than just giving a toy or something. We'd appreciate that. April the 30th at 630 at the Statesville Civic Center, they're having the Pregnancy Resource Banquet. And we need some volunteers for that. So see us if you'd like to help that or register on the church website. And the last one for today, awards night for the Eufola Kids Club. That's coming up uh, Sunday, May the 5th, May the 4th from 9 to 1030 that morning. They're having a practice. And then that service on Sunday night, we'll be having that kids club. So we're looking forward to that as well, too. Tithes and offerings in the black box. So when you leave, we've prayed. So it's, thank you again for coming. You are dismissed. <laughs>